Dead space, dead space, dead space. Woo, 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 woo. Oh my god, dead space is back. The ultra violent adapt on the fly gameplay. Industry standard sound design. UI literally baked into the juxtaposed neon metallic and fleshy goopy atmosphere, the bone chilling violin instrumentals, the goofy physics engine bugs? It feels like it's 2009 again and I'm back in middle school playing the game for the very first time. See, the first time I experienced Bread Space was when my preteen friend brought it over to my house so we could give it a try in my hot brand new Sony PlayStation 3 entertainment system. And we barely, barely made it to chapter 4 because of how scared to death we were by the half naked half-monster thingies jumping out at us. I think we were like 10 or 11, maybe, playing Dead Space? <laughs> my buddy gave me the game for my birthday that year, but I was still too terrified to play it. So I waited two years when I was a stronger pre-er teen, then finished the game in one sitting. I ate a whole bag of Lifesaver Mints and drank a 24-pack of Pepsi in like one eight-hour go. It was the greatest weekend of my life. Now, as everyone knows, this is a Dead Space channel. Always has been. I love Dead Space, and it's what I'm known for. What do you think the DS stands for in DS Lounge? It ain't standing for no dual screen. Mm -mm, no Nintendogs here. Only real gamer games that our moms hate. And your mom's gonna hate it. Why would they even make something like this? Dead Space 2. <laughs> is, this, is this really how I want to start the video? <laughs> The original Dead Space is one of the games that really cemented my love of video games back when I was young. And after EA completely and utterly murdered the series, I never thought I'd see it ever again. Seriously, Dead Space 3 is not okay. Changing the entire combat system to revolve around microtransactions, a poorly written weird love triangle story? <laughs> Removing the body horror and atmosphere the series is known for, and then pushing an ultimatum on the devs to sell a number of copies it was never going to sell, and then killing off the studio? Yeah, I still remember EA. Kids today think all Isaac Clark does is hit the gritty, but I remember everything you took away from us. Three sci-fi shooter trilogies from 2007 to 2013, all of them got messed up on the third game? Did you really think no one would notice that, EA? Remaking all of them does not give you a free pass. Where's my Shadows the Damn 2? What about Brutal Legend 2? Two games about rock and roll set in hell from two of the industry's most prolific directors, both with horrible dev cycles released two years apart? I see you, EA. I remember everything you've done. Long story short, I never ever thought we'd be getting a new game, let alone a remake. So after a decade of the franchise being dead, is this remade space any good? Yes. What the remake makes apparent right from the get-go is that it isn't just Dead Space from 2008 but with prettier graphics. It's the definitive way to play Dead Space with prettier graphics. Isaac talks now like he did in 2 and 3, but not enough to really get in the way of the visual storytelling. This humor is not a job you turn down. Except for that part in chapter 2 when the scientist lady kills herself and he goes, uh, uh. That's fine, whatever. He, he can have one. He isn't telling you how to solve puzzles every five seconds, so it's, it's all good. There's a bracer to the left of the chest. Maybe you can light it? Nicole is older now to better resemble being a chief medical officer, which actually really benefits the believability of the added side quests that flesh out her backstory. The, we die in the first room because we're cannon fodder to show this is a horror game characters, now have added personality and even play a part in Hammond's overall character arc. And the new cinematics in the beginning chapters make things a bit more tense and provide a better introduction to the overall themes of the game. Those themes, of course, being the concept of industrial, unfeeling machinery juxtaposed with raw human emotions such as love, faith, and hopelessness, and gross goopy monsters. The opening chapter is nearly identical to the original opening chapter, but the tweaks and changes to the opening and the overall game actually bring more benefits to the experience rather than fundamentally changing anything about the original. They even went so far as to make certain aspects of the game remain unpolished to keep the feeling and vibe of the OG. The shooting obviously feels better than it did way back in 2008, but it doesn't feel as smooth and polished as it did in Dead Space 2. Your movement, stasis, kinesis, shooting all feel heavy and weighty, but not clunky. It feels like you're a regular dude in an awkward iron suit trying to use tools as weapons. And this weightiness means that every enemy encounter is genuinely threatening because it's hard to maneuver, meaning the horror never really goes away. You're always one missed shot away from being flatlined. Unlike Dead Space 2, where after the first chapter you realize you're basically Iron Man and the game just becomes a body horror action game rather than an actual horror game. Jarvis? 
transition to the next section. The Ishimura has been transformed from being a set of linear levels to a whole continuous environment. Playing through the game, I didn't really realize or feel impacted by the fact all the areas moved from one to another without loading screens, and I felt the change was kind of minimal at best. Then I realized that was the entire point of the change, and the immersion was so good, I was never pulled out of the game, and it was actually great, and uh, man, I'm stupid. The remastered environments are, here, let me use the buzz term for it, how I remembered them as a kid. The flesh on the walls, the metal clanking of your footsteps, the whispering, flickering screens, and blood splattered on metal and neon. It's actually everything I wanted it to be, and it feels like a real remake and not just a simple redo of environments. Except they took out that awesome woo-woo noise in the chapter 2 imaging diagnostics room. Listen to that. Listen to what they took away from you. I told you EA, I remember everything. Now, of course, the remake does change things, and some of those changes aren't necessarily for the better, or for the worse, they're they're just different. You can't smash the glass in the vending machines anymore, or blow up heads against the walls using Kinesis. Literally unplayable. Upgrading equipment and weapons has been reworked. So instead of finding weapon schematics, you have to carry back to the shop to unlock and then decide what to buy with your hard-earned limited cash. Now you just find every weapon in the game naturally while exploring. Finding all the weapons instead of buying them does fix the issue of players relying solely on the plasma cutter like the first game had, but it does remove that interesting risk versus reward system of buying new weapons instead of buying supplies. Power nodes are now only used for upgrading weapons, so the idea of unlocking supply room doors with nodes and sacrificing a permanent upgrade for limited supplies to make your time easier is replaced with a security card system to unlock doors. It promotes backtracking and playing through the new content instead of asking the player what's more important to them and are they willing to risk limited supplies for more upgrades. The upgrade tree has been changed so now every single slot upgrades your gun in some way rather than using empty slots to make paths to upgrades that you want more than others. They've added collectible weapon parts that replace weapon schematics and the branching upgrade paths. So instead of carefully choosing where to go to get what you want, now you have to find certain parts in the world to expand your upgrade tree and get special upgrades. These massive overhauls to upgrading weapons and exploring mean that the constant question that the original game had of short-term comfort and supplies versus long-term survival with upgrades is basically completely gone. Risk versus reward has been replaced with an emphasis on exploration, which objectively speaking isn't really a good or a bad thing, it's just different. <laughs> but I'd argue it actually works out better coupled with the other new additions to the game. Security clearance is tied into exploration, which is tied into the new side quests, which is tied into making the ship more open. Finding the weapons is tied into the new upgrade tree, which is tied into finding weapon parts to expand said weapon tree. These changes do alter the core gameplay loop of the original game to be noticeably different, but these changes are here to promote experimentation with your playstyle and engaging more with the other new additions to the world. The gameplay of Dad Race is already about careful management of your resources and playing creatively, so altering gameplay systems to better fit that philosophy of emphasizing the world, story, and combat of the game works better overall in my opinion than how it was in the original. But they did change the Pulse Rifle's completely useless 360 blow all my ammo to breakdance move from the original game, and they changed it to just a regular grenade launcher like in Dead Space 2? I mean, sure, yeah, it's better for game design and gameplay, but is it is it really better for the funny lols? I think not, your honor. Case dismissed. <laughs> when I when I tried to get footage of the of the Pulse Rifle's original alt fire, this the second I used it, it just completely crashed the game. Can you can you, can you believe they took this out? Now I know what you're thinking. You don't care about any of this. Game design, more like lame design. <laughs> You're like me. You wore your Dead Space shirt to EA Play 2021. Remember how Dead Space 3 went and you were skeptical. <laughs> I actually did make this little stupid Photoshop for me and my friends when that event happened way back when. I uh, she could have made it into a real shirt. You saw that announcement trailer and had two thoughts in your head. Number one, will they keep the achievement to kick the baby necromorph 10 times? The answer is no, it was a different time. You can still kick them though, it's fine. Don't worry about it, it's all right. I, I didn't even want the achievement back or anything. And then B, what's gonna happen to zero G basketball. Oh, they added the impaling mechanic from two and three? Wonderful, great change. Everyone saw that one coming. It rewards quick reflexes and creative thinking with lots of damage and saving resources. Oh, they didn't add the recharging stasis mechanic from two and three? So stasis stays the resource and then it adds more attention to combat and item management? Wicked, 
perfect. I thought that was gonna be changed for sure, but the game is better for sticking to the original's design. Who cares about any of that garbage? Will I be balling or not? Oh, we will be all right. Jarvis, initiate balling protocol. I am not happy with what was done with the shooting gallery. What was once a light-hearted distraction and fun minigame that alleviated the increasingly darker tone of the second half of the game is now just another enemy horror room. Turning the shooting range into a modern warfare obstacle training course is fun! It keeps the spirit and intent of the original shooting gallery while making it fresh and new. Making a horde rush you halfway through your run of it? Awesome! Makes sense with the game and provides a fun little scare and surprise while you think you're safe in the little minigame room. But having the obstacle course break down so you can never finish it or run it again? And just getting all the unlocks for it for beating the enemy rush? Dude, not cool. All they had to do was make it so the Necromorph Rush doesn't break the course and so you can play it again afterwards. Get a special reward for beating the rush, sure, but keep all the other lockers locked. Then let the player run the gauntlet and earn rewards just like the original game. The shooting gallery was a memorable, creative, and fun part of the original game. Now it's just another combat room but with a minigame aesthetic. Why do you tease me like this, EA? Fine, take away the wicked sweet Metroid Prime 3D map. I get the new one is easy to read and fits with expiration now. Fine, take away my map, take away my vandalism, take away the exploding heads, change the gravity panels, electricity panels, fine whatever. But why'd you do my boy shooting gallery dirty like that? The new power breaker mechanic of having to choose what to turn off to reroute power to progress and solve puzzles is a genius way to apply self-inflicted pressure onto the player. Air, lights, doors. Having the player make the decision of how the game will be altered and how the difficulty will be changed per combat sequence is just brilliant. Sorry babe, the jungle ambience stays on during sex. <laughs> But why did you guys completely rework the Asteroid minigame? I understand a lot of people didn't like the Asteroid turret section. It was janky, too hard on console, too easy on PC. I get it, I get it. It needed to work from a design standpoint. Maybe I'm the only one who even liked it. But the new sections are just... I, I mean, they fit with the game well, but they're, they're, they're not very memorable, and they finished them in like five seconds. The minigames like the turret section, shooting gallery, and zero-G balling provide a level of respite and charm in a game that grows increasingly increasingly stressful, disgusting, and depressing as it goes on. Ned Pace is a game that grows literally and metaphorically darker as you play it. Isaac and the player grow increasingly more isolated as the chapters of the game go by. Systems on the Ishimura shut down. More people die. UI and visuals get more distorted. More flesh wraps around the ship and warps the metal corridors and rooms you thought you knew before. The horror grows and spreads the deeper you go. So having these little moments like the shooting gallery, basketball, and the turret section really do help lighten the tone of the game and stop it from becoming overbearing. Dead Space is an atmospheric, narrative-driven survival horror shooter with gameplay about skill, item management, and creativity. So yes, of course the game is going to focus on the systems of that game gameplay loop and not deviate too much from them. And yes, it is really good at all those things, but if you take a look at the original game's contemporaries like Resident Evil 4 and Bioshock, there's still many small breaks of tension from the dreary, violent atmospheres those games have. And I'm sure the remake's new contemporaries, such as the Resi 4 remake and probably Ken Levine's new Bioshock-esque Project Judas, will stick to the core values of the original 2000s games and will offer new small details and moments of calm that will stick into the memories of the players. These detailed changes in the Dead Space remake do fundamentally change the game to be a different experience than what I remember playing in middle school. But these changes aren't necessarily for the worse, most are honestly for the better, but overall they're just different. It's clear the devs loved the original game and found new ways to capture the essence of what the 2008 game was all about. Yeah, the first game came out a month before Twilight was in theaters, let that sink in for a minute. These details I loved so much as a kid, blowing up heads with Kinesis, the shooting gallery being a moment of peace in an otherwise horrific chapter, the sci-fi sound, and the original exploder scream. <laughs> Little details like these are what made the game so special to me. 
All that being said and all semantics aside, I think I honestly would recommend the remake over the original, simply for how strong the atmosphere is and for the more modern gameplay touches. At the end of the day, this video is really just a fanboy nitpicking a 5-star remake of a 5-star game. The updated graphics, the improved shooting, and the fact you can peel the skin off necromorphs, effectively making their bodies health bars, which is so freaking sick, oh my god, it means the remake is probably the definitive Dead Space experience, even if the woo woo sound isn't there anymore. The remake let me relive some of those angsty preteen memories I hold so dearly. Shooting the baby necromorph with the thunder gun made me remember myself living in a different town, going to a brand new school, nervous and anxious about meeting new people again. Looking at the bridge room and watching meteors go by made me remember sitting in that same room in the original game as I played with my friend and both of us were just too scared to continue, so we looked out into space and watched the falling asteroids for just a brief moment of peace. Some of my friends may not be a part of my life anymore, but the memories I have of them, of who I was and where I lived, I hold dearly and are captured in the spirit of Dead Space. Every time I see the original game, I still get that taste of mint lifesavers in my mouth from the marathon of the OG I did way back when. And even if some features of the game are a little different than I remember, I still get that little tingle of winter mint in the back of my throat while I was playing the remake. And that alone was more than worth the price of admission. Uh, Jarvis, activate outro. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me do the generic off-script YouTuber thing real quick. So the previous video on this channel did, uh, very well? And the channel has grown like 10 times in size? Going from about 100 views a video and 100 subs to over 1,000 subs and 80,000 views on a video? It's, uh, it's a lot, it's a lot to take in. It, uh, it took two years to hit about 100 subs and then boom, like a week to hit over 1,000? That... What? I know it's a little wacky to go from talking about Splatoon to talking about Dead Space, and it might not be what some people expected, but that's kind of my shtick, and I just love video games so freaking much, and I just want to talk about all of them all the time, so it's... Who knows what you're gonna get? <laughs> Thank you. It's it's incredibly humbling, and I'm thankful for how many folks not only took the time to watch my work, but they actually enjoyed it, which is... That's a lot. That's really all I got to say right now. <laughs> I want to say more, and I want to show you guys more cool stuff, and I wish I had more cool stuff to show at the moment, but right now... This is all I really got, is dead space and a thank you, so... So yeah, thank you. And thank you for being here, and thank you for taking the time to talk about video games, I guess. And alright, uh, now play the outro. <laughs>